Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am the professor. Today, we're going to talk in general about uh, Ponzi scheme, the type of Ponzi scheme that uh, Novatech, Emini FX, and a whole bunch of other companies, all the people obviously have been involved in. So today, I'm going to talk about this gentleman that uh, whose picture you see on the screen. His name is Host Jida. Horst Jira is a German citizen. He was born in Germany and he claimed to have uh, worked in different places and in different industries, including insurance, including energies, and so on and so forth. So, however, uh, in 2016, he said he was approached by a guy named Mike who uh, told him about cryptocurrency and they decided to uh, join forces together to open this company that you see on the screen, okay, USI Tech. Now, USI Tech, just like Novatech, uh, created a platform uh, that allows people to trade. They design a multi-level marketing scheme and for the better part of two years, um, Mr. Uh, Chida, who actually was the CEO of the company, raised about $150 million to about $200 million. And uh, two years later, just as expected, just like in the case of Novatech, Mr. Chida and USI Tech disappeared leaving a lot of American investors uh, losing a lot of money, about $100 million. Now, during that time, uh, Chida did something very smart. First, he they closed down US, after they're taking all people's money, obviously no one got their money back. They decided to close down the company. They closed down the company, everybody goes their way, being very rich. And a lot of that money were actually taking and funnel to crypto uh, accounts. And yes, you name it, in a country that everyone seemed, this is where they seem to go when they committed fraud, Estonia and Eastern Europe. So a lot of people have been complaining to the FBI. This is what back in 2018 when uh, Chida closed uh, USI Tech. And people were calling the FBI, people were complaining about how much money they lost, nobody got their money back. So the FBI had been looking for host uh, Jira for the last six years. So here's what he did though. He went to Brazil, uh, find himself a beautiful woman, got married, moved to Dubai, and that's where he had been living since then, living large with other people's money. So the investors, obviously, who lost money thought that this was the end of it all because it's been almost six years, uh, nothing happened, and so on and so forth. But the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of New York, which is which covers, actually, it's in Brooklyn, it's located in Brooklyn, and you could see a picture of the courthouse there. The uh, FBI had been looking for host Chida for the last six, seven years. Now, obviously he's been living in Dubai and he hadn't been into the United States at all. He hadn't been anywhere probably outside of Dubai that would allow the Interpol to intercept him if he travels outside or to countries that um, have extradition treaty with the United States. So there had been a seal indictment for him. Nobody knew that if he had been indicted because the indictment has been sealed. So for whatever reason, Mr. Chira decided to come to vacation in sunny Florida and Miami. And this happened, this happened uh, last week. So technically, whether he knew there was an indictment or he didn't know there was an indictment, the minute he got to Miami International Airport, the uh, Homeland Security alerted the FBI, we got your men. So Mr. Host Cheetah was arrested for running a 
the Ponzi scheme of fraud and uh, sent to New York to uh, stand to face charges of uh, fraud. So he's been charged with a series of fraud about 17 counts of anything anywhere from uh, you know from mail fraud uh, to all kind of fraud that they can think of. They they threw, the, the FBI threw him at him. So this guy, obviously, I hope he still have some of that money. And for the investors who invest on USI Tech, and this is kind of did back 2016, 2017. And the reason I'm speaking about USI Tech is to actually let my viewers know that there's been a lot, a lot of fraudulent companies online. People who would come to you and offer you offer to make money for you and cryptos. And I have been telling people for better part of two years that stay away from these companies. They're not licensed. They're fraud. It's a Ponzi scheme. They're not trading for you. All they're doing is taking your money and then absconded with your money, which is what uh, Chida did. So when Chida got to Miami, he was promptly arrested because there was a, a seal indictment and a warrant for his arrest. And now he's sitting in the uh, Brooklyn Metropolitan Center in Atlantic Avenue, um, waiting to be, uh, I mean, in Second Avenue in Brooklyn, waiting to be uh, arraigned on charges of fraud. So now, this case obviously may not have much significance to the Haitian community, except that if there were some Haitian members who might have invested in US high tech. But what I'm trying to say to you guys is that there is no easy way to make money. Every investment has some risk associated with it. So anytime somebody tells you, I can you know, uh, get your money and don't worry about it. We never lost. We never loses anything. We always win. That doesn't happen in the market. You win, you lose. Okay. That is, there's no such thing as you win all the time. It doesn't happen. Even for the best traders, people that have years of experience in trading. Okay. Sometimes they win. Sometimes they lose. Sometimes they make a lot of money. Sometimes they don't. It's just the way the market is. You know, if it was uh, something that was guaranteed, then we would everybody would have been a millionaire. I would have been a millionaire. You would have been a millionaire because you would have known that your investment is guaranteed. That doesn't happen. So uh, why am I talking about USI Tech? And let me explain to you why. A lot of you have sent comments and messages and asked me what's going to happen with Sinfia Patreon, where is Sinfia Patreon? Now, nobody knows where Sinfia Patreon and Eddie Patreon is. We don't know. I don't know where she is. I couldn't tell you. But I can almost guarantee you, wherever Cynthia Patreon is, I am sure that there is a seal indictment by the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office in New York waiting for her. They will find her. I, I mean, I it may take a few years, but they will find her. Because in the case of Cheetah, uh, Chida basically left the United States in uh, 2018. That was the last time he was here, 2017. And they closed USI, USI Tech somewhere in 2018 after they collected $150 million to $200 million. And then everybody split. His friend Michael, that he said, Klim, who introduced him to this, and himself, you know, just split. And they go out their way, they take their money, and nobody heard from them. So they probably didn't think that the FBI was looking for them, but the FBI was. And if you look at how USI Tech was structured, and I'm going to tell you that I think that the idea of Novatech came from USI, USI Tech because USI Tech came to the scene in 2015, 2016. Novatech was created in 2019. And I looked at the fact uh, about USI Tech, how they claim to have created this trading platform for people to be able to trade, but they're also creating these packages that you could buy for $99, $40, $50. In the case of USI Tech, it was 50 euros, okay? So that you don't have to trade that they will trade for you. 
And they also created a multi-level marketing. For example, I come in, I buy a package, I invest money. Then now I can go out and finding people to be under me. So when these people come and invest, some of that money I get 10%, 15%, 5% or whatever. So the person who's doing the recruitment has an incentive to recruit people. You know, their family members, their friends, people in their community. They're recruiting all of these people because they have a financial interest in doing so. They make a lot of money in doing so. So the question I always ask is, do these people know that they are part of a Ponzi scheme? Do, you, do they know that this is racketeering? Do they know that what they're doing is illegal? And the way that we, you know, you would have, you, you, you would think about it is this. You have to look at the level of education of that person. You have to look at the level of sophistication uh, of that person. And, and you have to ask the questions, whether a person of, with that level of education or sophistication would engage in something like that without, do, do, without doing due diligence, whether they would engage in something like that without really finding out whether this is legit. And of course, uh, some people, if they know that they're making money, they just don't care where the money comes from or how they make the money. They're just in a blind eyes thinking, oh, well, I could say I didn't know anything about it, but not so fast, not so fast, because if you didn't know, you should have known. And if you didn't know, you ought to know. So I think that in the case of Novatech, there's going to be a class action lawsuit uh, that I heard of. And it's my understanding a lot of individual people are going to be sued because there were directors of Novatech, senior directors of Novatech, making a lot of money. So um, if you watch, if you are basically part of my, uh, my subscribers, you watch my show, you would know that this is something that I've been talking about trying to educate the community on how to stay away from that type of fraud. So if you receive an email, if you receive a text message, or if your friend tells you about a quick way to make money, please be very careful. Do your research, ask questions. You know, the first question you wanna ask is how long they've been doing this? Do they have a license? Where, do they, where are their licenses? New York, Florida, Miami? Uh, Illinois, you know, New Jersey, whatever, ask questions. Do not give your hard-earned money to people who basically, they're just like parasites. They're going to live uh, a good life just based on your money. So it's good to invest. And I don't think anyone should uh, say it's bad to invest. It's good to invest. But if you're going to invest your money, Invest it on something that you understand. Invest it on something that you know you could win, you could lose. You could make money, you could lose money. And never invest in money that you can afford to lose. In other words, don't invest your mortgage money. Don't, don't take money from your 401k to invest it in something you don't understand. Don't mortgage your house and take that money and go invest it in something you don't understand. And I know in the case of m FX and Novatech, a lot of people in the community did that. They went and took two, three hundred thousand dollars from their four hundred one k or their, uh, you know, their account, their retirement account, and just gave it to something that they don't know how this is going to work. So now they end up losing all that money, and then they feel bad, and then they depress, and then they commit suicide, and then they have all kind of problem going on. So please be careful, be careful, because I feel bad because I know how hard you have to work to make your money. And I really feel bad when somebody else take advantage of you and take your money. Now, certainly, if you're gonna do an investment and you've learned about it, you are aware of all the risk, you've uh, signed a contract, you understand that you could lose the money and then you lose the money, it's okay. Because when you invest, you lose money, you could always put it in your income tax that you invest that money and you lost it. And that's all fine because you knew the risk. Everybody told you what was going to happen, what could happen. And then you knew exactly what was going on. Now, that's different than when somebody comes to you and lie to you, okay, tell you a whole bunch of lies because they want you to invest on something that they knew was fraudulent. They knew it was a Ponzi scheme. I mean, that's the reason they lied to you because obviously they want to take your money. So please be careful.
And of course, this is the professor. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Tell your friend and your family member to subscribe. And of course, this is a channel that is bilingual. I do videos both in Creole and uh, and uh, and in English. And of course, in English for uh, my followers who don't speak Creole. And of course, in Creole for most uh, Haitian, if not all Haitian, who speak Creole. I thank you so much for watching. Please be careful. Take care of yourself.